So Google's Gemini 3 really explored everyone's expectation. Its coding and front-end capability is so much better than anything we have ever seen. But one thing people didn't quite realize is how different and important the prompting is for a reasoning model like Gemini 3. In Google's own official doc, they also mentioned that Gemini 3 is a reasoning model, which totally changed how you should prompt it. One critical component of those reasoning models like Gemini is those generated reasoning tokens. It is very different from other models where we need to have a fully packed prompt to give it all the possible context and logics to make it work well. In fact, quite often you will find the more prompts you give Gemini, the worse the performance is. And that's because it is designed to respond to direct and clear instructions. If you give it an overly complex prompt, it may overanalyze variables and sometimes be limited by the process you include in those prompts. So it really needs a concise prompt. But on the other side, it is also extremely sensitive and steerable as a model. Gemini 3 can perform so differently based on simple instructions you give it to it. For example, if I just prompted help me build a Hello World page, even though its front-end capability is great, it will still generate something like this. But with just one simple keyword, like this, with a linear style, it immediately creates something very different. If you attach image reference, the quality to a lot of UI details just be dramatically better. So as a model is extremely steerable, and your prompt can make a huge difference. The question is, how do we actually come up with the right amount of prompt that can make the most out of Gemini 3? Well, Entropic actually released this blog post recently called Improve Sonic for Front-End Design Through Skills. It basically introduced this front-end design skill that you can install in cloud code. And it is making models like Sonic 4 generating almost close to Gemini 3 level of design. And the most interesting part for me is that this significant improvement is purely driven by a well-crafted prompt they put together that has good balance between concise and provide useful details. And they uncover their exact method and process of how did they systematically get the most out of a cloud model through prompt and context engineering. And I think this method just apply across all sorts of different models, including Gemini 3. And today I will articulate and break that down for you into a three-step process and take you through a real example of how do I craft a prompt that can get even small model output high quality X Cali draw Y frames. But before we dive into this, from an entropy example, we already know that one single well-crafted prompt can completely transform model behavior. And this goes way beyond just front-end design. And HubSpot actually took this idea way further. They built a library of fully tested cloud skill prompts across sales, marketing, and business operations based on their best practice learnings from hundreds of thousands of business. And those aren't generic prompts. They mirror exactly what I've been describing. And you can connect directly via special HubSpot connectors. Then these prompts instantly become personalized using a real CRM context. So instead of writing generic outreach email, you get insights on real customer segments. So if you want a smarter cloud outputs, I highly recommend you go check it out. I have put the link in the description below for you to access. It's free, it's practical, and honestly, one of the best collections I've seen for real business workflows. And thanks HubSpot for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to how the Entropic significantly improves the front-end design output from models. The most interesting concept here is this distributional convergence, which means during the sampling process, the models predict token based on statistical patterns in training data. And safe design choices that those work universally and offend no one dominate the web training data. So at default, those models almost always refer back to the safe design choices. And this just applies to much more than front-end design. It can be used for request debugging Python, analyzing data, or even writing emails. And the method to come up with this set of prompt is pretty consistent. You want to identify what are the convergent defaults, which means you want to get a good understanding for the specific tasks that you want model to do. What are the outbox default behaviors? And identify those convergent defaults that you don't like. Then provide very concrete alternatives and structure the guidance at the right altitude. In this very specific example, they start identify some key areas that impact the final design output where model's default output is not that great, which specifically are typography, animations, background effects, and themes. Then translate all those things clearly into code that cloud can write. The key here is the right altitude of the prompt you put in. Often we will be writing two specific prompts where you will just list out very specific step one, two, three, four, five, and get agent to follow. 
but this often makes your system to overfit in a few very specific scenarios and make it vulnerable for the real world long tail use cases. And the key thing to get to just right level of altitude for the problem is going through this three step process of testing and identify those convergent defaults that you don't really like, and then find a root cause about why model has that behavior. Then structure a guidance with concrete alternative behavior that you want the model to follow. And just repeat this process again and again. So in the end, you can come up with a well-crafted prompt that covers specifically those areas and generating stunning outputs consistently. And one example here is typography. So I will just start by prompting model directly without any system prompt to see what kind of default results we will get. And when I asked to create a music player, this default result it gave me. It has this classic purple bluish color and this font that looks a bit boring. So what Entropic did is that they add this section called use interesting fonts, where it will give overall instruction that avoid using boring generic fonts, which including Inter, Roboto, Open Sense, Lato, and default system fonts. And here's some example that it gives for different scenarios, as well as some pairing principles, like which type of font that work well together. So if I copy this and just put it into the system prompt here as a section to cost crowd those default behavior and generate again. Now you can see that it start using fonts that is not part of the outbox vanilla design. And really cool observation here is that once model improve one aspect of the design, it generally start improve across all the other behaviors like colors, interactions, and a UI model. That's why this improvement process is an iterative loop. You try to understand what are the exact things that actually change the model behavior and only as those ones, because every new prompt section you add in might already impact some other behaviors, so you don't need to overly inject tokens. And similarly, we can add more sections for things like interactions, animations, and use high quality stock images to steer models to certain behaviors. Based on that, the result generated will be a bit fancier and crazier. And if you want to learn exactly what Entropic wrote officially, you can just do slash plugin marketplace at Entropic slash cloud code and then do slash plugin install front-end design at cloud code plugins. This will add the front-end design skill in your computer directly. If you're on Mac, you can open this doc cloud folder and inside plugin marketplace and Tropic cloud code plugins, you should see this front-end design skills and you can open the skill.md file to learn exactly the prompt that they wrote. And I use the same method to come up with a UI prompt that I found to get Gemini 3.0 be extremely creative on the UI generated. Meanwhile, I also want to show you how can you use similar methodology to tune the model for other different type of tasks. For example, I'm trying to teach super design agent to be able to design high quality X Cali draw wireframes. So it can be used to align with user about the specific design layouts and explore multiple different versions of design. At default, the model is not that great at producing high quality results consistently, but with the right prompt engineer, I was able to get it produce much more high quality result. And this is how I came up with that prompt. First thing you want to do is identify the convergent defaults. Basically, you want to identify what are the model's default behavior? Where does it fall short? The way we do that is firstly, let's try with most basic and minimal prompt that helps you understand model's default behavior. In our specific case, I will just give bare minimum prompt. You are a professional UX engineer who creates clean X cathedral wireframe designs. So here you can see that I didn't output the JSON we want. So I can turn on this JSON mode and start adding the first prompt. Only output JSON format as this specific structure. And here you can see I'm using the XML format. So XML format has been proven format to use, especially when you have a large number of documents or files to input context. In general, it has better performance than JSON structure. So with this one, we can try again. However, nothing happened when I try to paste. I'm going to assume there is something wrong with JSON generated. So I will paste it in ChatGPT and ask it, help me identify any issue in the JSON above. Now I can say start identify some issues. Like this model is making up some types that uh, didn't really exist for X Cali draw. And also for lines, it should not use the X, Y, Ways, and Heights. Instead, I should be using points coordinations. So if we remove these two line items that has a wrong data format, as well as circle, then it does output result, which didn't look very correct. And we're gonna like add more rules to it. One of those text element is not four ways, as well as those layout is not exactly correct. So with just a few quick tests, we already start identifying some gaps with models default behavior, like using the wrong element schema, the wrong ways for text and layout alignment. And at this point, there's one common mistake that people often make is that you start adding rules to the prompt that is too specific or not instructive enough to actually change the model's fundamental behavior. And one thing I found really useful is actually try to understand why model's default behavior is like that. 
One thing I often do is that when model output result that I'm not really happy with, I can insert a next user message to be debug mode. Don't generate again, just help me understand. Why do you set a width to be zero for type text and turn off JSON mode so I can regenerate it? And this is a really good way for you to identify the root cause and defects in model's knowledge. And here you can say that it says, it set a width to be zero because it saws the text will be rendered with intrinsic width, which means it expects the width to be dynamic, auto resize based on the text content, which is not actually the case in X Cathedral. This is a critical insight. So instead of just saying width and height should not be zero, I will tell you what's the right way to define it. The best way I found to make the text aligned is making sure the actual weights of the text element to be the same as the main container and just use text align property to control the specific position of text. And this is exactly what I put in there. And this is where your domain knowledge comes in because to provide those alternative solutions, I have to start developing understanding of the actual X Cathedral JSON schema, what kind of property it has and what are the effective way to control those elements. Once I have this new prompt, I can delete the previous conversation history and try again. Great. So as you can see, this new version is a lot better than the previous one. But meanwhile, another very important thing when you write this prompt is that you want to make sure the guidance you give is at the right altitude. So one problem I had with the JSON it generated at the moment is that it includes things that we don't really need or didn't really impact the style, like versions, it's deleted, stuff like that. And in those type of scenario, it's very common or easy for us to give very specific concrete prompts like I can define for each type, what are the specific properties it should include. But the ones that probably will work better is that you start articulating what is the reasoning behind those behavior. So instead of giving very specific instruction like this, I can just say only output properties that impact styling, never output things like seed version, things like that, that didn't really contribute to styling. So we basically repeat this loop a few times until you get prompt that cover all those default converts. Then you have well-crafted prompt for your specific scenario and use case. And I use the same method to come up with a UI prompt that I found to get Gemini 3.0 be extremely creative on the UI. I generated. Like this is a one shot example for a to do app, a fashion shoe brand landing page, and a music recording UI. And we just packed everything into a design agent with Gemini 3 on superdesign.dev that is capable to generate super high quality UI generation. And we also integrated with the wireframe capability too. So you can show you multiple different versions of wireframe to align ideas with you very quickly. And you can mix match different wireframes UI together and ask AI to remix something new exactly in the way you want. So we're really excited about what we can do with all those new model capabilities came out for a four step product design agent. So if you're interested, you can check out superdesign.dev. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you and I'll see you next time.